A House Oversight Committee bombshell this week. They released new evidence in the alleged Biden family influence peddling scheme. The committee, led by Chairman James Comer, found that the Biden family received more than $20 million in payments from Russia, Ukraine, and Kazakhstan during Joe Biden's time as vice president, including a payment from a Russian oligarch to Hunter Biden and his business associate, Devin Archer. Here to weigh in on this, attorney and state chair of the Delaware Republican Party, Julianne Murray, also with us, Seamus Bruner. He's the director of research at the Government Accountability Institute. He's also the author of Fallout, Nuclear, excuse me, Nuclear Bribes, Russian Spies, and the Washington Lies that Enriched Clinton and Biden Dynasties. Great to have you both here. Happy to be here. Thanks, John. Uh, you know, J Jamie Comer, uh, Congressman Comer and his uh, investigators keep coming up with this information. We heard from him earlier. He sounds frustrated. But let's talk about what else they also found in this report. They found that Devin Archer and his accounts were used to funnel payments directly to Hunter Biden. Also, a Ukrainian oligarch was behind Hunter Biden and Devin Archer's placement on the Burisma board. And that a Kazakhstani oligarch was behind Hunter's purchase of a $142,000 sports car, the exact same amount of money wired to those accounts. Also, Oversight Chairman James Comer joined Chris Salcedo this week. Here they are discussing the alleged Biden family scheme. Well, we have a few more associates to talk to. We're trying to get a few more of the shell company bank records. Uh, once we do that, I think we've made the case, I think we've already made the case now, but it's only going to be a stronger case, that we need to see Biden bank records. Uh, they're going to be given an opportunity to be transparent with the American people. Remember, Joe Biden said he was going to be the most transparent president in the history of the United States. Has he been the most transparent president in the history of the United States? And, and also, tell us what you make of uh, this revelation, Seamus. Absolutely not. Joe Biden is the most dishonest and opaque uh, president of the United States. I mean, just time and again, going back years, he said he never met with his son's business partners. He said, I mean, even more ludicrous than that, he said he never discussed business with his son. We know that's not true. We know he was actually right in the center of the business. Hunter was traveling with him on Air Force Two. I mean, you think about that. His son flew with him on Air Force Two to China, and 10 days later, he gets a billion-dollar deal bankrolled by the Bank of China. But with these deals here specifically from the 20 million, uh, these are some of the most corrupt individuals in the world from some of the most corrupt countries in the world. You've got the oligarch Yelena Baterina. She's got ties to organized crime. She's a billionaire oligarch in Russia. In uh, Kazakhstan, Kenjiz Rakashev, uh, here's some breaking news for you. The Daily Mail just reported today, Rakashev has a company that was supplying armored mine-resistant vehicles to Russia for the invasion of Ukraine. Right. So one of Hunter Biden's business partners is supplying uh, tanks for Russia. And then, of course, Burisma, everybody knows that's the most corrupt uh, oil and gas company in Ukraine. So these are very unsavory individuals. You know, you know, one of the things that a lot of the legacy media, Julianne, keeps bringing up is, and I'm going to go back to the David Weiss situation for a second, is that David Weiss was appointed by Donald Trump. You see that in almost every single headline uh, from the mainstream press. But tell us why that's not a, a factor here in this particular investigation. Well, a couple of different reasons. One is that, yes, he was appointed by Trump, but he was, you know, both Democrat senators signed off on it. And, you know, and this is, I mean, what David Weiss has shown is that he is absolutely a political animal. Everything about this investigation has been political. And this week, when this bombshell comes out, what does the attorney general do? Appoints him as the special counsel. So now he's not going to be able to talk to the Congressional Oversight Committee. He is now the point person on more of what's going on here. He already knew about this. Now, you know, we know about it, but this guy who's not going to do anything about it is in charge of it. So for those of us that are attorneys that believe in truth and justice, it's just a slap in the face, an absolute slap in the face. I just give me some insight on what the scuttlebutt is there inside Delaware among the legal community about this appointment, considering it goes so far against the complete opposite direction. So 180 from what the regulation says it should be someone outside of government. 
Well, and thank you very much for pointing out that the regulation says shall. I mean, there is no wiggle room there. And, you know, and, and I yeah. can tell you, I ran for attorney general in 2022, and everybody has heard about the Delaware way. And this is just more of that. This is, you know, somebody that is under control of the Biden administration in charge of investigating the Bidens. That doesn't work. There is no fairness or any transparency at all in this appointment. I learned the meaning of shall from Professor Dershowitz's class, and by class I mean last time I interviewed him last night here. Seamus, I want to go back to the White House and their response uh, to the Oversight Committee's memo. This is what they said. They're calling the committee's evidence innuendo and misdirection, saying any connection to President Biden is missing, uh, except for that trip to, on Air Force Two to China that you just brought up. This doesn't exactly jive with Devin Archer's recent testimony either, does it? Not at all. I mean, what, what can they say? It, it, it looks so bad. It's looked so bad for such a long time. And with the bank records coming out, I mean, you've got friend, family friends. I mean, Devin Archer is a very close family friend. He was meeting with Joe Biden in the, in the White House when Joe Biden was vice president at the very moment that Burisma hired Archer and Hunter. Uh, Archer is as close as it gets. And he was saying that Joe was getting on phone calls. He was in meetings. He was at the, the Cafe Milano when the Kazakh oligarch and the Russian oligarch and the uh, Ukrainian oligarchs are all sitting at the table. Uh, Joe's in the center of it. The White House has nothing they can say. Uh, there's no innuendo here. It's black and white bank records, eyewitness oh, testimony. Seamus, it was just they were just talking about the weather. That's all they were talking about. <laughs> Joe Biden was just talking about the weather. Nothing to see here. Great to see yeah. you both, Julianne and Seamus. Thanks for being with us.